Hello and welcome back to Drive Driver Driven. Uh, my name is Humble and this is hopefully the last uh, part of the engine build for the Zero. Um, I've got, uh, well, not much time to wrap this up actually. Uh, the Ultima crate is going to be here in just a couple of days and uh, the goal here is to get the engine wrapped up uh, get the gearbox modified and get the drivetrain into the car now that I have the drive shaft uh, and get the car closer to drivable condition um, uh, and hopefully maybe even running by the time the crate arrives. I, I think that's a tall order, but we'll see if we can make that happen. Um, for now, where we left off on the engine is we had basically the short block put together and I needed to... Uh, resolve the issue with the cams on the engine um, and basically what it was is uh, the the cams that I got I was unaware that there was a difference in the uh, Mazda head versus the Ford head for the Duratec and it basically boils down to uh, whether it had a variable valve timing or variable cam timing on the intake or if it just had static timing on the intake um, and so in the Mazda head, it does have a, a variable valve intake, but the Ford does not. And the cams that I got were for a Mazda, so they, they just won't work. Uh, so I'll end up um, uh, selling those or donating them to another build. Uh, and in the meantime, um, I had to order another set of cams and swap them out. Um, next up is I actually need to get the head on the motor uh, and torque down with the uh, the head gasket uh, so that we can properly set our or at least check our clearances between the back of the cam and or, or the base circle rather uh, and the bucket that sits over the spring. Um, I'm gonna get that going really quick and then um, kind of show you guys how you measure that. Here we are with the uh, head bolted down. We got our cams in place. All of the uh, caps that hold the cam bearing or cam journal or whatever in place. Those are all torqued down. And I've already checked our clearances. So if we look at all our measurements here, you can actually see uh, these are the measurements for um, all the different buckets. So across our exhaust valves, pretty much, we had uh, 10 thousandths clearance. And across our intake cam, we had uh, 9 thousandths uh, clearance, which is pretty much par for the course. But the way you check that is if you look at the lobe on the cam, uh, basically the nose of the lobe is on this side. Uh, and then on the back side, basically the opposite of this, back down under here is the base circle. And what you'll do is you'll take a feeler gauge like this one and you're gonna measure on the the, the clearance between the, the lobe and the bucket down here. And you wanna slip that 
in between uh, and make sure you have clearance. And then you want to do that until you can't uh, slip one of these feeler gauges in between anymore. Um, and then that'll give you your clearance. The last one that fit is how much clearance you have between the bucket and the lobe. And so I've done that for um, basically all of our valves, both intake and exhaust. Um, the engine right now, we have our timing bar in place here at the back. So the cams are set for top dead center. However, the crank is not yet because I wanted to show you an update that Mazda has made, uh, or rather Ford and Mazda on the timing gear. So this is the crank timing gear. And if you notice, there are some serrations on the edge here. And they're basically sharp little teeth that dig into the crank uh, on the back side and then on the pulley on the front side. Um, but if you look at the old timing gear, if I pull it out here, So this is the old timing gear, and you notice it doesn't have those serrations. It's nice and smooth on both sides. Well, previously, you would need one of these guys. It's a friction washer that goes between uh, the, the cam gear or the, the crank gear for the timing set and the crank when you slide the gear on. And this was absolutely necessary uh, because without it, it would allow this timing gear to slip potentially and if this slips your whole timing on the front of the engine slips uh, so uh, basically it can lead to uh, catastrophic failure with uh, valves slamming into the pistons etc so you want to make sure that everything was tightened up and that you had these friction washers in place now with the new timing set you don't need these anymore because of those serrations it, it it updated, so it got rid of these, at least on the crank. However, I do have a new pair that fit behind the cam gears, and those are still necessary because they haven't updated the cam gear design. So those are still necessary for your timing set. Um, which, speaking of timing, uh, it's time to uh, get all of that timing equipment onto the front of the motor now. So our chain for uh, our oil chain, our timing chain, and all of the sliders and tensioners. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now.